1994, the year I graduated from college, uh, in the great state of California, where I'm from and where I went to college, uh, the streets of California, for a while, looked like this, all over the state. Massive, massive protests. The state, frankly, torn apart that year by something called Prop 187. It was more or less the Arizona Papers, Please law of the 1990s. Prop 187 was a ballot initiative that essentially said that people who were in California illegally, there as illegal immigrants, could not use even basic social services. They could not go to the hospital, for example. You could die on the streets instead. If you were a kid, you'd be ripped out of school. Prop 187 was supported by California's then Republican governor, Pete Wilson. And California voters passed it at the ballot box. And that brought forth a long and loud and very, very, very emotional political battle. But it also brought forth some truly excellent political satire. Um, a guy calling himself Daniel D. Portado, like deport, get it, deportado? Um, he founded a fake political group called HALTO. HALT, Hispanics Against Liberal Takeover, and then just naturally put an O on the end of it. So it's not HALT, it's HALT-O. Uh, the Daniel Deportado character also founded a group called Hispanics for Wilson, as in California's Republican governor, Pete Wilson, supporter of the search grade schools for illegal children and toss them out onto the streets law. The chairman of this group, Hispanics for Wilson, was described as, quote, formerly Governor Wilson's top Latino official, his landscaper and personal groomer. The group said they would support Republican Governor Pete Wilson in his anti-immigrant efforts by pledging to, quote, retrain white-collar workers and middle management in the agricultural, restaurant, and hotel maintenance arts once illegal immigrants are displaced from these highly sought-after fields. They said they would create self-deportation centers, which will encourage all Hispanic residents, of citizen, regardless of citizenship status, especially their elderly relatives, to return to their countries of origin. The whole membership of Hispanics for Wilson promises to voluntarily leave the country when Governor Wilson wins the fall election. Self-deportation centers. Again, this was uh, part of a fake press release from a, a, a satirical group, and it was dispatched to news organizations during the Prop 187 fight in California back in the 1990s. This was a Hispanic group. They all pledged to never speak a word of Spanish again, except for adios amigo, when they were self-deporting. They also did radio ads pushing the self-deportation joke. Immigrants, are you tired of being pushed around in America? Well, don't sit on your sarape. Do something about it. Join the conservative political action group, HALTO, Hispanics Against Liberal Takeover. I am the chairman of HALTO, Daniel Deportado. What is self-deportation, you ask? Think of it as a permanent vacation. Just imagine, in one easy step, you could avoid all this crazy anti-immigrant harassment in America. How? Self-deportation. Self-deportation is a trademark of Hispanics against liberal takeover. Subject agrees to voluntarily repatriate to native land or Mexico, whichever is nearest. All self-deportations are final. No exchanges or refunds. Tickets are one way only. Tickets are one way only. Subject agrees to voluntarily repatriate to native land or Mexico, whichever is nearest. It's political satire at its very best, right? And, and, and like all of the very best political satire, it's close enough to something that seems like a perversion of the truth that some people actually didn't get the joke. Like, for example, California's Republican Governor Pete Wilson, who was a specific target of that satire. He did not get the joke. In an interview with the New York Times columnist William Sapphire in 1994, Mr. Wilson explained without irony that the goal of Prop 187 was, in fact... Self-deportation. You will self-deport. He used exactly the phrase that was being used as satire about him without understanding its satirical origins. But the Prop 187 episode was an important moment in Republican politics. Not, not just because it was literally a moment of self-parody. It was also important because of what it said about where the Republican Party was headed. Now, there have always been nativist and anti-immigrant movements in the, in the United States. But Prop 187 was the start of the modern Republican Party trying on super anti-immigrant politics for otherwise mainstream and ambitious Republican politicians. 
So when George W. Bush tried to be a Republican moderate on immigration, the reason he got no legislation passed on the subject, he couldn't get it through his own party, is because he ran up against that other post-Prop 187 Pete Wilson wing of his own party. Pete Wilson himself was essentially lost to history and forgotten after his role in the Prop 187 conflagration in California. And for all the fallout that it caused, for all that he did to rip the state apart and drive this divide down the state's population on the issue of, of immigration, for the generation's worth of damage that Pete Wilson did to the Republican Party's relationship with Hispanics, ultimately Prop 187 never went into effect anyway. It was ruled unconstitutional. And then Pete Wilson retired or something, became largely forgotten. Until, until Mitt Romney dug him up. Uh, for his presidential campaign this year, Mitt Romney went trolling through the dustbin of Republican history, and lo and behold, he found Pete Wilson there. Mr. Romney went and found Pete Wilson from whatever he's doing now and brought him on board as his special honorary California campaign chairman. Mitt Romney also brought on board a man named Chris Kobach, who is essentially this year's Pete Wilson in Republican politics. Chris Kobach is the guy who, even though he is from Kansas, he's the Secretary of State in Kansas, even though he's not from Arizona, he is responsible for writing Arizona's Papers, Please law and anti-immigrant laws in a number of other states. The Papers, Please law in Arizona, of course, has torn apart that state as well since it was first proposed and then signed into law. The Papers, Please law is the law for which we are now awaiting a Supreme Court ruling on its constitutionality. As that ruling approaches, it's interesting, Spanish language media in Arizona uh, have really pulled out all the stops. They have been running long form, no commercial break broadcasts in Spanish in Arizona, trying to prepare people for that Supreme Court ruling and what it is going to mean uh, for Latinos in that state because that law has been so divisive and so emotional there. That hugely controversial, hugely divisive legislation in Arizona, uh, constitutional or not, um, is seen by presidential candidate Mitt Romney, he says, as a model for the nation. Should there be aggressive, seek them out, find them and arrest them as Sheriff Arpaio advocates? You know, I, I think you see a model here in Arizona. We should have known from his snuggling up to Chris Kobach and dragging Pete Wilson out of the past that he was going to do this. But Mitt Romney, I think, still sort of surprised some people when he positioned himself in the Republican primary this year as the most anti-immigrant of all the primary contenders. He was like, he was like this year's Tom Tancredo. The question is, if I were elected and Congress were to pass the DREAM Act, would I veto it? And the answer is yes. Should there be aggressive, seek them out, find them and arrest them as... Sheriff Arpaio advocates? You know, I, I think you see a model here in Arizona. We hired a lawn, a, a lawn company to, to mow our lawn, and they had illegal immigrants that were working there. And when that was pointed out to us, we let them go. And we went to the company and we said, look, you can't have any illegals working on our property. That's, I'm running for office for Pete's sake. I can't have illegals. It you say you don't want to go and round up people and deport them, but you also say that they would have to go back to their home countries and then apply for citizenship. So if you don't deport them, how do you send them home? Well, the answer is self-deportation. Self-deportation. Invented by brilliant Latino satirists in California, making fun of anti-immigrant Republicans, now being embraced, apparently completely without irony, by anti-immigrant Republicans. Pete Wilson was that guy in the 1990s. Mitt Romney is that guy right now. And as we await the Supreme Court ruling on the Papers, Please law, uh, which Romney says should be a model for the nation, Mr. Romney today spoke before a Latino political group about what it is like to be running for president as the son of Mexican immigrants. Throughout my campaign, I've often had the chance to speak about my, my dad and how proud I am of, of him. He was uh, born, as Gotti said, to parents, American parents living in Mexico. When he was five, they left everything behind and started over in the United States. His dad, my grandfather, was a builder, and he went bust more than once. My grandfather didn't make much money. There were times in my dad's life when he lived in poverty. But my grandfather had big hopes for my dad and tried to help him as best he could. My dad didn't finish college, but he believed in a country where the circumstances of one's birth were not a barrier to achievement. And by the circumstances of one's birth, what Mitt Romney means, at least when he's speaking to a Latino audience, 
is that his people come from Mexico. Substantively, though, um, in Mr. Romney's speech today, he still would not say whether or not he agrees with the new policy that President Obama just initiated, which allows people brought here as kids to get work permits to be able to stay here and work here legally. Republicans have been sort of tied up in knots in terms of trying to figure out how to respond since the president announced that policy change on Friday. Republicans seem to have settled, at least for now, on criticizing the president, not for the policy itself, but for having done it himself as president instead of asking Congress to do it. It's disappointing that President Obama, even though he had a Democratic Congress for the first two years of administration, promised the country and particularly the Hispanic community that he would enact comprehensive immigration reform. He didn't do it when he had the chance. And now at the 11th hour, he comes up with this executive order. Was there any attempt to work with the Congress? No, there was not. Uh, and the point is, is that we've got to do a comprehensive immigration reform plan. That's exactly wrong. That's exactly opposite to what really happened. I mean, the Republicans are trying to say here, or at least trying to avoid saying whether they agree with the president's policy. They're just saying he should have done it through Congress and he never even tried to do it through Congress. That's exactly wrong. When Democrats controlled both houses of Congress, they actually passed no. the DREAM Act. That's Nancy Pelosi when the Democrats controlled the House passing the DREAM Act with the big smile on her face because she's happy because it was a Democratic idea and President Obama supported it and those are the Democrats cheering. They passed it in the House, then it went to the Senate and Democrats were in fact in control of the Senate and they passed, sort of passed the DREAM Act there too in the sense that they got 55 votes for it which ought to be five more votes than you'd need to pass something in a majority rules body. The reason it didn't actually pass through the Senate and become law is because Republicans filibustered it even though Democrats had a majority. Republicans blocked Democrats from passing the DREAM Act with the majority that they had even though Democrats had lined up 55 votes. So Republicans are now saying it is an outrage that President Obama never tried to take this through Congress. They make it sound like they wanted something like this to go through Congress. They've just been waiting for the opportunity. Republicans did not want that. Democrats went for it, and Republicans stopped it from going through Congress. And so now, President Obama has found a way to get it done anyway. President Obama himself will tomorrow be addressing that same Latino political group that Mitt Romney addressed today. He has the disadvantage, of course, of not himself being the son of a Mexican immigrant. But he does have the distinct advantage of having a specific, observable policy on this issue and of not having an alliance with the most virulently anti-immigrant elements of modern Republican politics hanging around his neck like an albatross.